I know this is not the proper way to sharpen your knives, but this is not a cooking channel, so I hope you don't mind. Today I'm going to talk about how to get your images tack sharp. It's a really important thing that you are in control to get your images sharp and to get it sharp at the right place in your composition. But let's start. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the today's topic about how to get your images tagged sharp, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. Remember that my channel is all about Olympus gear and about you getting to be a better photographer. And also, I want to thank every one of you for being there and watching my videos. It's a lot nicer to make these videos when there's somebody's actually watching these. So thank you very, very much. But now let's get into the today's subject. Focusing to the right place and the right place is the place that you want to focus is very, very important. But of course you can get really artistic and make images that are totally out of focus. That's a different thing. But an image that is slightly out of focus is horrible. Don't do that. And tip number one, use only one focus point. This way you have the full control where the camera will focus. If you use, let's say, all the focus points that are available in your camera, it's the camera that will decide and most likely it will focus to the nearest object. And that's something that you might not want. And this comes very important if you use very fast lenses like the Olympus M Zuiko F1.2 Pro series lenses, which have quite shallow depth of field. Most modern cameras have a very large area where you can move the focusing point. And with Olympus cameras you can use the arrow pad to move the focusing point. And with Olympus EM1X there's also the joystick where you can move the focusing point where you want it to be. And then some Olympus cameras have so-called AF targeting pad where you can use the LCD screen for moving the target or the AF target point. Even though if you're using the EVF and that's a very handy feature, especially with the Pen F camera, where you have the viewfinder on the side of the camera, not in the middle. It's a lot easier to use the AF targeting pad with Pen F because of that. But that's a very, very good way of uh, setting your target or your AF point to the target. And if you do a lot of portraiture, then I recommend using the face detection, or actually called face priority and the eye priority. That will make sure that the face or or the eye is the one that is really, really sharp, because usually that is what you want in a portrait. Of course, there might be some exceptions, but very seldom you want anything else than the eye or the closer eye to be really sharp. And tip number two, use the right focusing mode. There are several different focusing modes in your camera. And let's start with the subjects that are still, that are not moving then the best way is to use the still AF, which is called SAF in Olympus cameras. And in some cameras, I know it's called AFS, but it's the same thing. The way it works is that you use this shutter button to start the focusing and it will lock on your subject. Or if you are more familiar using back focus button, then use that and the camera will lock the focus on the subject. And if the subject moves, the AF won't follow. So be very quick if you are photographing moving subject with the SAF mode. But it works very well in general photography, landscapes, cityscapes, uh, portraits, still life, whatever. Usually the SAF is the way to go. And then there is the continuous AF. It's a bit different than the SAF. With the CAF, it will focus continuously. So if you move the target point, the focus target point to another place, it will focus on that. But with the SAF, it won't. So there is a big difference, but this is not the proper way if the subject is moving in your composition, like a flying bird. Then you need to use CAF plus tracking. And this is the way to photograph the moving subject. And it will track the subject, sometimes better, sometimes not that good. But remember that the EM1X also have the so-called uh, subject recognition AF, that it will recognize airplanes, cars, motorcycles, or actually helmets and then of course trains. And that's a, another way of making images if, if using AF track. And that, that's a good way for those subjects. And remember, Olympus has promised us that it will 
continue to develop the IA on the camera. So it will in the future most likely recognize more subjects. But for now it's also those three. It's important to understand what is the difference between CAF and the CAF plus tracking. Then there is the third option which is the SAF plus manual focus. And this feature has to be turned on and it's only available on EM1 Mark II with the firmware 3.0 and with the EM1X. And after you've turned it on you have the possibility to fine-tune the autofocus. Without, if this is turned off, the focus ring is just turning but it won't affect the focus at all. But if you want to fine-tune your SAF, then turn on the feature from the menu. And then there are two other options, the manual focus and pre-manual focus. And I will talk about those later in this video. And tip number three, stop down a notch. A stop or two. Usually every lens has a sweet spot and in most lenses it's not the widest aperture. But when stopping down a bit you will get the most sharp results from your lenses. Of course you can do a scientific scientific thing and test your lenses. Photograph a target with different apertures and test out which aperture will give you the best result. But speaking of scientific methods, you can also check your lenses with a special target that it's made for to check out that your lens is actually focusing where it should be. And then with Olympus cameras, you can actually fine tune your focus on your lens. You can add lens data to your camera and it will recognize the lens and then it will use the lens data from the camera to make it focus exactly where it should be. So when after testing if you find that there are some mistakes in the focus then you can set parameters that will correct your focus on that lens. Actually I've never done that but that's one way of being sure that your lenses are okay and they are focusing exactly where they should be focusing. And then of course there is a benefit of stopping down a bit. You will have more depth of field and the focusing is not that crucial if, when you're using or when your lens is wide open then you have a very very shallow depth of field but increasing the depth of field makes the photo or makes the photographing yeah the photographing makes the focusing a bit easier. So there is two benefits on that. You will find the sweet spot and then you will get more uh, depth of field to get your images really sharp. And tip number four. When you use manual focus, use focus peaking and magnification. Those will help you to focus manually really a lot. Because manual focus is sometimes better. For example, in very very dark conditions it might be easier. Or macro photography. The mirrorless cameras have a very very big advantage over DSLRs because you can have focus peaking and magnification in the EVF. But there is one advantage is on DSLRs. You can have a split screen focusing screen switch to your DSLR. So that will help you to make manual focus a lot easier from your, well that's not called an EVF, it's called OVF. And that will help you with the DSLRs. But I prefer focus peaking. And with Olympus cameras you can tweak the focus peaking. You can turn it on, turn it off. You can have magnification on, you can have magnification off. And then you can change the colors of the, of the peaking colors to help you to use it in any condition. Doesn't matter if you have a yellow flower, you can use black focus peaking or red, whatever you like. And that's a really good thing. And it really, really helps you to make manual focusing a lot easier. And I have made a whole video about manual focusing with Olympus cameras and with using the my vintage lenses. But I will put the links link to those in the end screen. So if you're using a lot of vintage lenses or like to use manual focus, please go and check out those videos. They're really helpful in that sense. But then there is pre-MF, which I've actually never used. And if you have, please tell me and how have you used it and why? Because I only get uh, one uh, reason that I could use it is that is astrophotography. And pre-MF works so that you can set it up from the super control panel with help of AF or you can dial in manually the distance that you want the manual focus to be. And if you turn off the camera manual focus will be on that uh, distance. But if you turn the manual focus ring it won't stay in that distance. In some Olympus cameras you can set the AF focus to a certain distances. Let's say that you know that your subject is five meters away, you can set the focus to be only from four to six meters, for example. 
And then of course 300 millimeter lens that has buttons that will restrict the focus to a certain area. They're actually the same way as the restrictions that you can set in your camera but with setting them in camera works with every lens. So in that sense that's also a good thing to know and make your focusing easier and faster if you know that it's only in you know certain area your subject and it will only the AF will work only on that area. It will make your image sharper or actually the AF faster and that way your image sharper. But let's move on. And before we get into the fifth tip, you guessed it right, I will give you a couple of bonus tips in the end. But let's get into the fifth tip. Use fast shutter speeds. If you have a moving subject, to get it really tack sharp you need to focus properly and you need to have a shutter speed that is fast enough. Because if the shutter speed is too long, there will be motion blur. And if you don't want the motion blur, then it's a bad photograph. Of course, motion blur in many cases might be something that you want. If you want to freeze the action, freeze the motion, use fast shutter speeds to get the image or the subject to be sharp. The best way to figure out what shutter speed will freeze the action is to test and make images of moving subjects. Try cars in different situations, flying birds, running people, walking people, and memorize those and then you already know how much the shutter speed should be so that you can freeze the motion if you want. I remember back in the film days there was a kind of like a golden rule about how fast your shutter speed can be so that you can hold your camera steady. Let's say that you have a 35 millimeter film camera and you had a 50 millimeter lens on it. The fastest shutter speed that was recommended was 1 60th of a second. So the shutter speed was exactly the same as your focal length of your lens. So if you had a 200 millimeter then it was 1 200th of a second. But that rule does not apply anymore. But if you want to be on the safe side you can still apply that rule to get your images really really sharp. Modern cameras have very good stabilizer. It can be in the in the sensor or it can be in the lens. And it will help you to get sharp images even with longer shutter speeds. And those who have cameras that have stabilizers, what is the longest shutter speeds You've, you have managed to get so that the image is sharp. Mine is about three to five seconds, four seconds maybe. What is your record? And if you haven't tried that yet, go out and shoot and make the record. And tell me in the comments down below. And then the bonus tip. Use the EVF. The way you hold it in your hand is that you have your hand like this open palm and then you drop the camera or <laughs> well don't drop it but set it to your hand and then take your other hand like this. So this is actually this hand, I'll need to take that away. This hand is actually the hand that will hold the camera steady and this is the only one only to just press the shutter button or if you use the back focus button then back focus button then you will press it that. But remember that always. And then let's see if the AF works with my EM1 Mark II. And when you standing, try to stand your legs a bit apart and then bend your knees a bit and then have your camera steady. And while you press the shutter button and during the exposure, don't breathe. Then you will get best results with your camera. If you use the LCD then have your hands like this and then have two hands in the camera or hold near the camera and then press gently the shutter button. That way it's a lot easier to get sharp images and when you're having your hands like this if you're breathing really heavily it will move the camera and it will cause some motion blur or some what do you call it I don't know some motion blur in the picture anyways. All right we're back inside and let's throw in an extra tip. Use a flash because the duration of a flash when you are lighting your subject with the flashlight it will freeze the action and that's a good way of freezing action and I just realized that I don't have any pictures to prove that because I never really use it and but maybe that's another video that I will make how to freeze action with your camera and how to photograph motion. That could be a good video. I will write that down. But sorry that I don't have any, any pictures of the flash. But the, the idea it works is that even though if you have a longer shutter speed and it's, it's uh, too long for freezing the, the 
uh, the action. But when you have a flashlight that lights up the subject, it is only fractions of a second that it will light the subject and that will freeze the motion. That's the logic how it works. I hope you understood what I mean. And if you have used flash to freeze the motion, please tell me that also in the comments down below. It'd be interesting to see or hear actually. And you might want to watch these two videos next. There are videos about the manual focusing and using manual vintage lenses. And that will help you to focus with those if you like to use old vintage lenses or if you like to use manual focus. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.